Hi, I'm Sarah Waite, and today I'm going to take you through some of the features of the Pen Pal 2 plugin for After Effects. If you found the path tools in After Effects to be, well, let's just say not as great as they could be, oh! then this tutorial is for you. Let's dig in. Penpal 2 gives After Effects a dedicated workspace for paths inside of the After Effects interface with tools that will simplify and speed up your workflow. It's not free, but if you frequently work with paths in After Effects like I do, it might be worth every penny for you. Worth it! <laughs> okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open Penpal. Assuming you've installed it correctly, you should be able to go to Window Extensions Penpal 2 and that will pop up the interface. Uh, you may have to dock it where you want it. I'm gonna make it about half as big as my composition window because this is a dedicated workspace for paths. Now you'll see that there's nothing in it. That's okay, we're gonna load a path in it in a minute. Let's just take a look at the interface. So up here, we've got this reload button. That's what we're gonna use to load our path. Let's just say I wanna load this motion trail. I've got this motion trail path here just so we have something in the window. Let's take a look at this one. Select that path, hit reload. And voila, it shows up in here. Now, one thing to note, if you were to work on this path outside of this window, notice it's not updating. I'm just gonna make a couple point moves. Now I can update this two ways. I can hit this reload button. That's gonna update those changes. And let's see, I did a couple more. I can also just double click in here and that's gonna update. Now let's undo those changes because that made my path very sloppy. Okay, in addition to this big reload button, which you're gonna use a lot, we've got three different tabs here. There's one for paths, one for points, and one for tangents. Now, unlike working with this path in the regular After Effects path tools, I can work with all of these things separately, right? So if I want to move some points without affecting the tangents, I can select those points here, go to the points tab, and notice I'm moving them, but the tangents are not changing. Likewise, I can, let's put those back, go to the tangents tab, and I can do all sorts of things to align these tangents vertically, horizontally, to the center. I can move them around as a group. I'm affecting all the tangents at once, but I'm not affecting the points. That in and of itself is pretty freaking cool. Let's undo all those changes. And let's go into the path tab. This is actually one of my personal favorites. I purposely drew this overcomplicated motion path. We don't need this many points, right? This is just a path that this envelope is going to follow. And that's all I need it for. I might use it as a motion trail. So I can go in here and I can grab this cool little tool here, Simplify Selected Paths. Now it brings up a slider, which you can then sort of take it to the extreme, right? You can simplify it to four points, or maybe you want something in between, right? Maybe let's go with six points. I'm going to hit this check mark. Boom, my path is simplified. I've gotten rid of all those extra points. I've kept essentially the same shape. This is gonna work great for me. Another thing that you can do really quickly inside of this tool is reverse the path starting point, which you'll know, you know in After Effects, that can take a little bit of work, right? You've gotta drill down to the layer. You've gotta find that little button. You've gotta set the selected start index. In Penpal 2, I can go over to the points tab and let's say I want my first vertex to be this one. I can come up to set first vertex to selected point. Boom, done. I didn't have to drill down into the path. I didn't have to do any of that layer drill down stuff. I could just do it right in here. So that is awesome. Again, you can adjust points and tangents independently without messing each other up. You can do simplification and a lot of cool stuff in this path tab. We're going to take a look at a few more things in this tab, but let's do it with a purpose, right? So we smoothed our motion path. That's looking good. What I want to do with this animation is I've got this cool mailbox with a bird on it and some clouds. I actually got these assets from Design Stripe, which is actually an incredible website where you can get all sorts of illustrations for use in your projects. So I downloaded this one. I thought it was pretty cool. I adjusted the colors and a few other things to just sort of match it to the School of Motion style, but I think it's gonna work. So what I want to happen is I want this mailbox to sort of swoop right, and once it does, I want it to an envelope, this cool School of Motion envelope. I've got this one right here, right? Like I want the School of Motion envelope to sort of follow that motion path and go whoop, boom, right into the mailbox, right? So a couple things need to happen. I've got the mailbox moving already, but what I want it to do is while it moves, I want it to open, right? So I want this little door to start closed. 
and open as it moves. And then after the envelope goes in, I want it to close again. So the first problem is that, you know, this path is drawn sort of this way, right? It's not something easy to hinge. It's not going to be, you know, I'm going to have to sort of animate the path point by point. If I'm using the After Effects tools, that's going to be a little bit difficult, right? So instead, I'm going to use the Pen Pal tools and it's going to be pretty easy. So let's find Mailbox Door. Let's just go down to the contents and let's select that path. Let's load it into Pen Pal. And I've got my path in here, right? I can zoom in and out, right? If I want to see this a little bit better. I can also use the minus and equal keys to zoom by increments. So this path, right, like it looks like it's a full door, but it's actually broken right here. It's not a closed path and I want it to be a closed path. Now I could take the time to actually connect these points or move them together and and connect them that way. Or I can select them in toggle selected paths, open and close. And you'll see it's just adding and removing that little line right there, right? That is awesome. For me, that is worth the price of the plugin. Okay, so I've got that path closed how I want it. I am going to actually set a key on the path here. And then I'm going to come back to that first point of my movement. Let's fold up our motion trail, give us a little bit more space. Oh, before I set that key, let's unkey that. I want to do one more thing. I noticed that this path is like this, right? So what I want to do is I want to flip this path vertically so that it's boom, open, closed, open again. But if I do that now, right, if I move this mailbox door where it needs to be, which is in front of all this other stuff, this rounded edge does not look super cool, right? So again, I'm going to go to the tangents tab. I'm going to grab both of these tangents and I'm going to hit this zero selected tangents button. It makes them flat. It did sort of recenter us here. But if you look over here, it's exactly how we want it, right? It matches up with the bottom of the mailbox. That is going to work great. So now I'm going to rekey that path and then I'm going to come over to before the mailbox moves because I want it to open as it's moving. And now I want to make it close. So here's another cool set of tools in the paths tab here. I can select all of these and look at, check these out, right? I can flip vertically around the center, horizontally around the center, or I can flip these all based on the edge of their bounding box, right? So I could flip it right like a page turn, left like a page turn, up or down. Now, what I want to do is flip it up. That's going to give us a good start, right? Okay, that's looking pretty cool. It's set a key on my path here. If I look at what's happening, whoop, it's opening, it's closing. We're going to have to smooth that out at some point. But for right now, I think this is looking pretty good. Then I want, again, these, these need to sort of match up over here, right? Okay, so let's first grab... These upper points here, let's move them over and move them over. We will adjust the tangents in a minute. Now see how I'm holding the shift and it's just sort of snapping them in here, right? So in Pen Pal 2, you can snap to tangent ends, you can snap to points, you can snap a whole bunch of things at once, you can snap angles around in increments. You can do basically a lot more snapping than you can in the plain old After Effects tools. So let's get this up a little bit higher. Let's just take these and move them over. And I'm kind of eyeballing this a little bit. I don't think it has to be exact, right? Like this is just a fake mailbox. I'm gonna go back to that tangent tool. Uh, I'm gonna hit that zero selected. Actually, this tangent, I want to be vertically aligned. So actually let's find right alignment tool here. And that's gonna make it a perfect vertical go over here. Let's go into the points tab. This is going to make this all quite easy. Actually, I was going to align these vertically, but I don't actually want them completely aligned. And you can work with tangents in the points tab, but by default, they're going to be sort of separated, right? So that you don't accidentally move something you didn't intend to move, right? Just a little bit over. We're getting close, getting real close. So that's another thing you can do. So I just double clicked on that point. You can enter an actual value. So let's get rid of these little decimals and just see where that leaves us. Pretty close to where I wanted it. Yeah, so that's a nice, another nice feature, especially for those of you who are very precision oriented. Again, I'm just holding the shift key. It's snapping that vertically. And let's pull this one out a little bit more so that we don't see that crack there. Okay, so now we've got our mailbox closed, mailbox open. We probably want to have something in between that's going to sort of stretch everything to the side, make it not look so awful, but we can worry about that later. For right now, we've got our two poses. Let's just go ahead and easy ease it. 
that's going to be a little bit better than what we have. Whoop. Okay. Mailbox is opening. I want this to open a little bit faster. So let's go, we'll go into the middle of that move to the side. We'll have it open right in the middle 10 frames. So let's see how that looks. Whoop. Okay. And we can certainly adjust that path more, right? Make it a little bit more sealed at the top. Like I can, if I click off of this here, I can see just a tiny, tiny little gap of white. We're going to let it slide for now. Okay. The next thing I want to do is I want to have my cool school of motion envelope go in there. Okay, I'm gonna speed through this stuff while I just very quickly move these keys around and get this motion path working, and then we'll get back to pen path. Okay, so we looked at the Pen Pal 2 interface, how we can load paths into it by using this reload button. And again, you don't even have to select the path. You can just select the layer and it's going to load in whatever you've got selected. We talked about the paths, point and tangent tabs, all of the cool tools in there for aligning, distributing points and paths for resetting the start point of a path, simplifying a path, opening and closing a path very easily. And some of my favorites, flipping these paths with all these different ways relative to the center or the edge of the bounding box. We talked about how to zoom, how to reload your path. And let's finally talk about just one more aspect of this. This is the space that you're in, right? So you can, if you're zeroing out paths or you know whatever you're doing, you can do this in comp space, layer space, or local space. And so how your path works is going to depend, right? So I click to local space and you'll see that it took this path, which is spaced out in the layer and put it to the path's local space. So they're overlapping, right? That's not actually how they look. If I go back to comp space, it's going to show them in the comp and layer space as well. So depending on what your goals are, you can work in those different spaces um, that can be helpful. Uh, you may want to ignore it. Depends on your workflow. So that in a nutshell is Pen Pal 2. I hope you'll check it out and try it very soon. If you like what you saw so far today, be sure to like and subscribe for more tips like this. If you want to take your animation skills and After Effects to the next level, check out our 12-week in-depth course called Animation Bootcamp. Thanks for watching.